show you how to get this information manually because as I mentioned sometimes you cannot just simply get the information out of Google some programs are closed sourced and so on now quick note this what I'm gonna show you right now is not a definite method it might not work with some programs because they do not use the same messages that's the first thing and second of all uh, if the program was called coded in Delphi and so on and th there are other things a little bit more complicated that come into play but mainly the main idea is C++ programs with um, using the normal messages you should be able to do what I'm gonna show you in a few seconds so first of all uh, if you remember on the last video I talked about Winspector which is a very nice program to catch messages from other programs and uh, yeah if you don't have it installed well <laughs> but for you I would recommend you to get it if you want if you plan on playing with this kind of stuff um, if not just sit back and watch I'm gonna show you what I'm trying to say <laughs> so basically I just gonna go ahead and, and to the process tab in here and grab the Winamp and if I scroll down I should be able to see something like this again as you can see the title of the of the window is right here and if I go to the properties I am able to get the class name which is Winamp V1X one one quick thing that I do want to tell you um, you you might be tempted to go ahead and open the Windows Spy from Auto Hotkey but this is not gonna give you the correct information so if I bring this in here you can see that the title is correct sir the, the, that is the name of the song but the class is not the one that you want the reason for this is that the the um, how do I say the uh, the program is getting the active window but that's not what the class of the main window is and that might give you a few you know headaches <laughs> so again go I would recommend you to use this instead it is more reliable and it is more clean right so I just got the class name here and if you right click on it and hit on messages uh, let me clear the message filter clear everything let me see I have it okay so we have uh, I'm catching all the messages that that window is receiving at the moment right now Mm, what I do want to do is um, kind of clean up the message filter by uh, filtering out everything what I do not need at the beginning this process is kind of difficult because you have to figure out which is the message being triggered when you play the play button and so on and that is difficult when you have it like this moving you can stop it from time to time and you know uh, you can go ahead and read and see what is happening and so on but at the beginning it's gonna be annoying <laughs> that I can tell you now in our case I already know that the WM command is the one that I am interested in so I'm just gonna go ahead and right click hit edit message filter filter all of them and then just go ahead and look for WM command now I click OK I'm getting only the WM command related messages those are related to the WM command even though it's not exactly what I want so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click hide this particular message and so on until I get it clean and I am gonna do this because I don't know I, I thought that something might enter in there that I do not need okay good so right now I have the the message filter set correctly um, and what I do is I just bring the window up, hit the play button, stop button, and I should be able to see it in here. So as you can see, some messages came wrong that I do not need. I can hide those two. And as you can see, now I'm left with two messages. Now, this is the sent when I clicked, and this is the information received. So I'm not interested in the received ones. I'm interested in what was sent when I clicked that button. So again we know that WN command means 0x111 that is the, m the value of the of the message if not go to Google go to MSDN get that and later on you could you could see below here uh, here uh, that you have the 445 that's the value that I used before that is the W uh, the W param that I was using so again if you see the next one you see 447 that is actually the stop 
So this is play, this is stop. And you can do that for all the others, like for example for pause. I think you could see it right away. Let me see. There you go, 46. And so on and so forth. And you can do that with anything that you do in here in this window. So you can actually do it manually like this. Um, again, it is not that simple all the time, but it is good to know this kind of stuff so that you can at least try it, you know? You can at least take a look and try to get the information manually. Now, the last part of this video um, is uh, a, a practical example of how you can make two scripts interact with each other. So, uh, this time I'm not going to be using the standard messages, okay? So, what I'm going to show you is that you can actually register your own message and use that. And how cool is that? So, then the first thing that we're going to do is that I'm going to say DLL call. And for those that might get lost with DLL calls and so on, I have a video for that. You can take a look at it if you don't know what I'm talking about. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and um, use an API function, Windows API function called register window message. It does exactly what the name says. Um, it takes a, um, sorry, like this. It takes a pointer as a parameter. And this is very important. It doesn't take the text itself. It does not take a variable. It takes a pointer to that variable. That is something that if you're not sure what I'm talking about, it is because you don't know C++, and it is not a problem. I'm going to show you how to do it. Whenever you read anything about pointers, this is how you're going to do it. Basically, you're going to grab a variable. You're going to put some information on it. Let's say HK uh, Showbox. That is the name of my message. I just came up with it. Now, if you put an ampersand in front of the name of the variable, you're going to give the address of that variable to the function that you're calling and that's what you want to do in this case you do not want to pass the variable like this you will want to give the address of it not the variable itself and with that actually what is going to happen is that uh, this DLL call is going to register the message for you and it's going to assign a number to it and it is going to return that to you so as you can see it in here you will see that we got a number in here usually the, the if you set the options for auto hotkey to show hexadecimal numbers, this would be a hexadecimal number, but we have it as a decimal number, it's the same thing. Now, uh, I'm going to store that into a variable uh, so that we could use it later on. I'm going to use the same name of the m message, and we just registered our own message that we can use for other things. So this is going to be the uh, receiver script. I'm going to do something with this line. I'm going to make this variable super global some information on it on the manual because I do not want to be this uh, defining this inside a function so I'm just gonna uh, define it here and then I can use it anywhere on my code even inside functions so I'm gonna leave it like that the receiver script is gonna have uh, an on message you saw this one before and I'm gonna say that if I catch that message if anybody sends me that message I'm gonna run a function I'm gonna and being uncreative and creative as I am, then I'm gonna just simply put function return. So our function, what it's gonna do is that it's gonna take the double param, right? The L param, and then the message. Again, I talked about all of about all this stuff on the on message video because when you put the on message, your function might receive those three, four parameters. It takes four parameters, but I I do not need the last one. I'm mostly interested in message, but I cannot leave these two out. So basically, I'm just going to be waiting for it. And if message like this equals the message that I want, I'm going to say message box, I catched you. There you go. So let me see if I understand this. Um, a little hack that I'm going to do in here. This is not really needed, but I do not want to get the PID of the script or any other stupid things like the classes and stuff. So I'm going to make it easy for myself. I'm going to create a GUI. I'm going to say this. I do not put any options. And I say the title HK the demo. I don't know. Something. Now, um, this GUI, I just created it. But it is hidden. I'm not going to show it. I'm not going to use it for anything else. I just created that um, so that I can send the message to something, right? Um, again, this is not really needed. I'm just doing it for convenience. Uh, 
but at the moment yeah let's leave it like this again as you can see I'm not showing the GUI anywhere so I'm gonna, I'm gonna run this so you can see the script is running on the background and um, nothing is shown for that reason on my next script which is the other one the sender I'm I have to put detect oh hold on I don't want to delete that sorry let me see this I want to delete and this as well but so detect hidden windows on okay so remember what I told you if the window is in there but it's hidden it's not shown it is not in the taskbar it is nowhere then you have to put this if not the windows is not gonna get the message now in this case I do not need it super global I can leave it like this this is a very important thing if both scripts are gonna be using the same message you should register the message in both scripts now the way how this is registered it seems to be that it's using the hash code or I'm not so sure but something is that if you put exactly the same name of the message you will get the same number so when I run this uh, registration again I'm gonna get exactly the same number as I got before so now both scripts are gonna be speaking the same language that's what I uh, what I want to do here now in our case what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna say returning here I do not want to do anything fancy I'm gonna set up a hotkey and say send message our message and um, one quick thing this actually accepts an expression there so you do not have to put the percent signs and that's why I'm just using the variable name in there as well I do not need L param or W param. If I if I did, I could tell my other script to do special things depending on those parameters. But I do not need that because this just a very simple <laughs> demonstration. I'm not sending this to a uh, control. I am sending it to a window. So I'm gonna put the window title, which is HK demo, right? And I think that's it for the moment. So I run this now I have two scripts one of them has a hotkey the other one has a message box if I press the hotkey I should be able to get the message box because those two scripts even though they're separated they're communicating with each other and that is actually again <laughs> very fun you can do very interesting stuff you can have several scripts running at the same time and actually talking to each other of course you can register more than one message and you can do stuff like if the message is this one do that if the message is another one differently well then do something different and so on and so forth guys I hope that you actually enjoyed the video I hope that you could get some practical ideas on how you can use this and again we're gonna see each other